I kind of feel that some of you here, it's like the student teaching the teacher. Sorry about that. So, but I, I learned a new term today in our first meeting loving critics. I love that. You know, so that's loving crit criticism. I would take a minute and just make sure I knew everybody, but now I know everybody's names. At least it's in the class. There's supposed to be several more I was going to check on, but. Uh, We'll see them when they get here. But I thought I'd better take just a minute and tell you a little bit about me. My, I almost really want to do this. My place in the universe can basically be described by an experience I had with my daughter. She was about 15 and she comes home and we're just about this exact same time of year. And she comes in and she says, we'd have a big snowstorm. She said, Dad, I need some help. I was reading the paper. I thought, oh, I'll put the paper down. I'll be a good dad. I said, okay, Ansel, what do you need help with? She said, Dad, I need help building a snowman. Whoa, you're 15 years old. What's so hard about building a snowman? She said, Dad, I need help. Oh, me out the head. <laughs> and so my daughter, that's where I fit in the universe. I have a whole head evidently. So we're going to go through and try and overcome that disability today. <laughs> that I need help hauling out the head. The same girl once informed me in a fit of frustration that uh, never think you can take a joke at least. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, the unit service plan. Doug, in your group, how many have a unit service plan? You got any that have that, or where are we at? In my you know? district? Your district, yeah. I'm aware of one, maybe two. Okay. Okay. I wish I could say more. Than okay, so what we want to do is we're going through this class. Basically, I'm going to ask a couple things from you guys. Number one, um, I'd like you to be... You can listen four times faster than I can talk. I'm going to try and talk real fast. I want you to kind of just act enthusiastic, whether you're not or not, and that will help you listen faster. We slow down, maybe. We're going to discuss the purpose of the unit service plan. That doesn't want to stay on the hearing aid. At least so. There. Maybe that's better. We're going to discuss the purpose of the unit service plan. We want to understand the process of plan development, and we want to talk about implementing the unit service plan. To simplify that, we want to talk why, how, and just do it. And if you need some encouragement with me, excuse me, I have to tell myself, just do it there. So that's what we do. So why do we do a service plan? Jeff? Why are we doing one? It's for hindsight. Having never seen one, and I'm an assistant to the unit commissioner, not a commissioner, so my better half does most of this. Now you've seen one. Okay. <laughs> okay. What, what would, why would you think we would be doing one? Let's talk about the objectives of the unit commissioners, okay? What must, what must we be doing? What, what are the things that we do as a unit commissioner? If you'll pull out, oh, I didn't pass, sorry. Annalise got me started early. There's one for you. Would you pass one back to Mike? Here's one here. Doug, there's yours, which? Annalise has got that. Thank you. You'll find a little thing in there on why start a unit service plan. There's one for you. And there's also one that says the unit service plan. Down at the bottom of that, Rich, if you look at that, there's five bullet points. Would you read the first one? That's supporting. Supporting. Okay, supporting unit growth and retention through the journey to excellence. Supporting. To, Doug, would you read the next one? Contacting units and capturing in commissioner tools their strengths and needs and a unit service plan that enable continuing improvement. Emily. Linking unit needs to district operating committee and other resources. Yeah. Let's see. Supporting timely unit district and council charter renewals. Uh, supporting unit leaders by delivering effective roundtables. 
that provide program ideas, the relationship development, and finally communication. So in order to remember that, I put a little little system together. I called it great. What's the what do you think great is? How about growth and retention through JTE? R record your contacts in Unix in in Commissioner Tools. E engage and link units to available resources. A, a, authorized support, support timely charter renewals. Make sure they have an authorized um, chapter. And T, teach and support unit leaders, roundtables, relationships, and communication. So there are some rules when you do a unit service plan. I don't know why that keeps popping. Um, the rules create individually for each unit. Emily, why? Each unit is different. Why? Because they have a different chartered organization, different adult volunteers, different youth, different okay. purposes. Okay. What you're doing when you're coming up with a unit service plan, you want to come up with something that's actionable and a result of collaborative detailed assessment. Okay. And you want to enable targeted commissioner service. How many of you get to a service, a, um, you know, get an assignment? What did you tell me, Jeff, this first button? Been a unit commissioner for a while? No, never. So are you overwhelmed? A little bit? Preparing my wife's stories, yeah, it's overwhelming. <laughs> so, so do you know, I mean, do you know, what are you going to focus on? I've, my advice to her and when I've been chapter advisor and scoutmaster yeah. is to focus on the boys. Focus on the yeah. boys? Okay. And, and there, there's going to be some problems. When we do this collaborative assessment, it's going to tell us things and, and go something there. So you're going to have some issues with, with particular boys. Now, now, for me, here's here's what Troop 123. Now, Rick Sparkin is supposed to be here. I don't know where he decided to go, but he's not here. He has actually Troop 123. I actually made this one up. Well, I have a troop. So what's the difference with this troop, Emily, is that for me, not knowing this, it's a girl troop. Whoa. I have some issues, okay? So my first thought is, I'm going to go to my source to, to, to figure out a girl's troop, you know? And just so you know, there you go. The book Understanding Women has now been released in book books, <laughs> okay? But that's not true. So why I put that up then is if you want actionable items targeted to the group that you had that are individual and unique, any of your assessments need to be collaborative. I don't understand girls. I mean, I had four girls, and I still don't understand them like I should and what all their needs would be. But I collaborate with my wife, and she helps me understand because now I have grandkids and all that. That really helps. So how do you do a unit uh, simple? <laughs> a unit service plan, excuse me. How do you start? And what is it? Well, I'm assuming you've already worked on developing relationships and getting them to trust you and so forth. Those are all the basics of being a unit commissioner. To get to the point where you can sit down and have that collaborative detailed assessment, because as you go through the detailed assessment, it basically walks you through the process of identifying their needs, and helping you develop that unit service plan. And as you go to that detailed assessment, you go to page three, what does it say at the bottom? You ever seen that? Do you want to create a unit service plan? And I give you that. We're going to talk about that later. But you want to enter your unit contacts. Go to that part of it. We're going to talk about making sure you do the, the paperwork part of this so that, that – the collaboration part can not only be with what's been some history, but also with, with the relationships and things that you have with the people you're doing now. Okay? Does that make sense, Jeff? Okay? Use the collaborative assessment. You go through that. That unit assessment is pretty detailed, or can be. We're going to do one here in a few minutes. And you want to find areas identified that you can have for improvement. If you think of your group, you you that you're going, are there some issues or some problems? Mike, you got some 
Did you do anything with the unit commission? Well, I'm not anymore, no. I spent 20 years at it. Yeah, do they have, do they have issues? What are some issues that you've noticed over the years? Oh, no camping, scoutmasters, the patrol leader, uh, there's no budget, there's <laughs> too many different meetings, it goes on and on and on. So if you do a collaborative assessment and you figure out that and they have no budget, do you think there's some actionable items that they can do to fix yeah, the budget? Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and let me ask you this question. If I do a collaborative assessment on my own, not collaborative in other words, am I going to get all the good ideas to help with that, fixing that budget, for example? If it's not their ideas, they won't solve, they won't address the problems. Perfect. Thank you. That's what we wanted to hear. If they don't do it, they, they, they won't, it won't be done. That's problem. You know, your problem. Yeah, it's, it's my problem. Okay. Um. So we develop some action steps. You go through that as that collaborative assessment. I kind of have a time here. I want to get into some actual doing something. Uh, we want to develop action steps. We want to identify some responsibility. Uh, I know in my units that I've worked with over the years, there are certain things that I am not very good at. Rick, what about you? You have things that you're not very good at? If you're laughing, good job. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, we all have that. And so we, we need to create SMART goals, okay? What are, let's see, create SMART goals. What are SMART goals? Everybody knows this, but it changes when we talk about a unit service plan or we talk about Boy Scouts to an extent. Got to remember, SMART goals. Emily, do you remember? Specific, specific, measurable. Specific, yes. Measurable, measurable, attainable, attainable. And it changes just a little bit. Measurable needs to be prioritized, by the way. You know, not just we measure it, not just how what to do and how we how we're doing to get it done, but you need to prioritize those goals. Attainable and action oriented. One of the big changes. Okay. Relevant. Okay. But also realistic. What's the danger of realistic goals? You can't attain them. Oh, it's the danger of realistic, realistic. goals? The danger of sure authority. <laughs> I don't know. I've been in sales a lot. So I don't know how often this happens, but for me, it happens all the time. I go out first of the year, I start until I change my New Year's resolution, which is to have no resolutions. I wasn't very good at getting them. But now, I, in the past, I'd go out and set a goal that says, okay, I'm going to achieve here. Have anybody heard of a guided missile? You know what a guided missile is? There's several parts of it. I did a long-term presentation on it one time. And you got the head, you got the fins, you got the, the body, you got the payload, you got the rocket, you got you know, all kinds of things part of a guided missile. But that guided missile with a, has a picture inside that nose cone. And when you launch that missile, it's like going after goal. You have a picture of what that goal is. And I don't know, Mike, if you've done things like this for me, I've gone out and set a goal. That's hitting my I've gone out. Can you? I don't, I don't record, though, if I take this off. Huh? No, you can. It, the, the, it's fine. All right. I will talk loudly. I've gone out as a. As a, as a salesperson, I set a goal. Okay, by the end of the first half of the year, I'm going to reach the goal. What goes What goes happen? I have a picture in my mind. I go out and start working on that goal, and what happens? The goals, let's imagine the picture straight back, okay? I'm going like this. I'm going to exceed my goal dramatically, okay? What happens with my picture? I don't change the picture, so I start making subconscious directions, and pretty soon I adjust my course till I'm on the goal. What happens if all of a sudden I'm below my goal? I'll all of a sudden make corrections with that picture changes, but that the picture that they're looking at is not the one I set, so it'll make adjustments. And I usually just come in right on time. Years ago, I had a guy tell me, he does a, he'll still his company still around on sales training. He says, you don't set time limits and you don't set goal. You decide what your goal is. And you just get that picture and then you go for it. You don't worry about whether you're ahead or behind or whatever, because you'll with the right picture, you'll hit that. So a relevant realistic goal. So if you hit a goal, you have two options. One is too unrealistic, 
And number three, a lot of times we go below where maybe we could be or we're not, you know, they're not just not as good as it could be as a goal. So realistic means different things to different people. Okay. Time bound and resource based. That's the other little change. We talk about great goals or I mean smart goals for uh, 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 setting up a unit service plan. Okay. There's one more thing that's missing on a smart goal. Mike, what's missing? Beats me. <laughs> it's like uh, smart to me. Got to be visible. You got to write it down. Yeah, you know, got to write it down. But what's it got to be visible? I'm going to take take my big woman, you know, understanding women book. I'm going to throw it at you so you understand. Got to enter it in commissioner tools. It's got to be there. It's got to oh, be yeah. visible for everybody. Tools, yeah. It's got to be there. Is that not true? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's got to be there. Commissioner tools. <laughs> Those three, Commissioner Tool, Unit Service Plan, and JTE, which we're not talking about as much today, those all have to be there. Now, on our list before, we missed one. Ensure resources are available. We talked about that. Um, it's a little different now than what it used to be, isn't it? With the churches around, resources tend to be a little bit more of a, of a uh, focused issue. How's that? Okay. All right. What about the unit service plan and commissioner tools? We kind of talked about that. So what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of a breakout session. Rich, I'm going to ask if you would come down with Mike. I'll go down there. Well, either way, here is in your packet, there's, it shows up as a troop committee. Let's see, troop 1001, it's there, should be, I think. It says troop detailed assessment. What you didn't get was the troop detailed assessment with some information on it. So if you guys would go and start working on some actionable steps. Matter of fact, let me put up the next screen. Detailed assessment. Okay. Max, here's some problems. If you guys would do the first one would be planning and budget. You guys have come up with some fun. There's the information. Yeah. Doug, if you and Emily would do membership and program. And yeah, maybe Annalise would help oh, us. And if you would do uh, program and come up with some things based on those facts, you'll see if you take your troop assessment, your big one. At the front of that, there is a background. So that's the troop. We're doing troop 1000. Okay. And we'll take about 10 minutes. We'll go through that and then we'll discuss that. Okay.
Scott yeah. Master. Okay. First of all, let's let's talk about the condition. This that the true background. Is there anything that stands out in that background that we handed out that might be a little bit unique? That's only sixteen months old. Yep. Still and the scout different. leaders are pretty much brand new too. Yeah, and they're not they're not really not getting any much self support from the COR. One thing I learned, the one that caught me too, was they they think they might be competitive with the church's youth ministry. All right. Yep. Isn't that a little weird? You know, that, that I mean, from a scouting perspective, we can fix that. You know, that doesn't have to be competitive. It can go right and on. So, okay, back in the back. Mike, Rick, you guys. Rich, you guys. Okay, well, can you all hear me up there? So uh, they have a they have no annual plan to speak of, program plan. Uh, Scoutmaster has created a program. But if you're going to create an annual plan with a Scoutmaster, you, you better involve it. You know the uh, the troop committee, troop committee chairman, and uh, members of the troop committee, and they haven't done that, and, and so they've got a plan that the troop committee doesn't seem to know what's going on. They can't support it. Number two, because they have they've got basically no plan that is collaborative. They do not have a budget to support that plan. So you've got no plan and you got no budget. So those are the two issues that uh, and that's prioritized. Right? Yeah. So the priority here is to create an annual plan uh, involving the key three. But you have a COR who just <laughs> doesn't want to see to participate. So you may end up having a key two along with members of that committee. To you have a couple parents that are sort of interested. But how many How many boys did it say? I did Ten, ten boys. Ten. There's got to be some more parents that could, could be boys. interested in their boys. So you got to, nothing else, the, the scoutmaster and the committee chair need to get together and they need to invite as many parents and, and that COR to sit in and sit down and create this, this plan. And then once you get the plan going, and along with a unit commissioner who can help, and you also might be able to bring in somebody from the district who can help them too, such as the, uh, the outdoor chairman of the, the district. So One thing I haven't heard you collaborate with, and this it doesn't have the you know we got the key three we always collaborate we try and do that who else haven't you collaborated with on that plan you missed somebody I didn't scouts. hear maybe you had it the scouts the scouts the boys you could bring in the senior patrol leader but 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 the but the scout master when he created that plan should have involved the senior patrol leader and maybe he can involve the whole troop but I don't follow at least the PLC how are we going to know what the, I mean I've done it for years that uh, a lot of the boys. Now, granted, you can't take forever. Sometimes they're just never going to come to a decision. But a lot of times, if we're paying attention to those boys, maybe if we've been visiting that troop or we have a relationship with that unit, we can have some idea what the boys really want to do. Yeah, that annual plan, if you don't know, they, they do it usually in September. You lay it out. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go too far into that, but it's you, no, you and absolutely. the scoutmaster and the senior patrol leader. Yep, we got all day on. Okay. Doug, you guys have uh, membership. Was so, it membership? Yeah, we have membership we have, and program. Yeah, yep. Membership. All the membership through the program. Sure. Okay. So um we had all ten scouts came back. Hoping there were some. We gave them a five on that. Um they have not been able to recruit any scouts in addition to the two weebelows. So we suggest that they find a new member coordinator. Um we don't really think that the scoutmaster should be involved in take on that responsibility we didn't decide that i'm saying i think new member coordinator responsibilities are too much for the scoutmaster he has things that he or she should be doing specifically so finding someone else who can be the new member coordinator would be helpful for that uh, they had two weebelows come to the pack or to come to the troop but they had 16 or they had 10 over the previous 16 months so there are probably more Weeblos out there for them to get. So we suggested um, providing den chiefs to the local packs so they can foster a relationship with okay. them. Is that is you, are you got that in the priority? You think that would go, or is that just those are your? Oh, two we things? were supposed to put a priority. What would you think? The most important thing, I'd say, den chiefs. Okay, I like what would that. You say? I, I would say, yeah, that's probably the place where they have the quickest and best opportunity 
for growth because they've got the relationship with the pack. They've got demonstrated interest because they formed this troop from the pack originally. So there's probably more Weeblos coming up that could be captured if they would develop that tighter relationship. With okay. The pack. Now, did you do program or? We're we, we both did We're program, program, program together, but I can go over that. One other, one other quick comment, though, on okay. retention. We gave them a high score for retention, which is they probably don't need to worry about that right now. But if they don't get all these other things fixed, like program and everything else, they're not going to be able to attract. Uh, they're not. They're not going to be able to attract new scouts, and they probably won't retain some of their current scouts if if this thing stays on the current course. Okay, so we are in the midst of creating a unit service plan. Right. What do we need to do with what we've talked about so far? Focus and prioritize. And I don't have the scripts. Put those back up there. I don't know where it went. Oh, well, no. we need to write it down. Well, we need to get it somewhere. Yep. So how can we use Commissioner Tools to do that? Well, you can enter this stuff right in Commissioner Tools. Yeah, write that down. Yeah, which is what I thought this was kind of a substitute for. That's what, okay, that's exactly what prints off. Well, it's a little bit different. Very but similar. You can print that detailed rank assessment off. Right. And that's what that is. But that's coming off and showing up what the, the collaborative assessment is. Right. But now you're coming up with a plan. You need to go back into the tools and actually put that so all of a sudden uh, anybody can look at that. You know, somebody takes off and we, we have that. So I want to make sure I want to make sure that documentation, because we talk a little bit further. We're going to talk about unit leaders following up with things. How do you follow up with it? If there's no record somewhere. And it's basically let's have the record in the same place so anybody can follow up. OK, guys, go ahead, Jeff. We did guys, do program. We may have been in program, too. So we're doing well, did you guys do program? Oh, go ahead then. Add in whatever you come up with. Sure. <laughs> you know, a tag team on this one. Um, reading through the program, let's see what were the highlights of, of it here for those of you who didn't read it. Um, troops been attending summer camp, or at least a week long summer camp. Uh, one note in here is the scoutmasters thought that the uh, has been too busy to have regular courts of honor that may or may not be oh, that he's too busy is it an issue that courts of honor that can be discussed later um let's see one service project what was the other key point here well the troop hasn't participated in district camperies merit badge clinics or other district um events uh and one note that we well, they also talked about the scoutmaster uh, creating a second patrol inside the, the troop. And that was our kind of red flag that came to the top was the scoutmaster um, forming patrols rather than guiding the troop through that process. He did it for them. But that That's a big red flag is that they're, they may not need two patrols. They may need a different patrol or the boys didn't have any input in it from what it is it reads here that that was a, an administrative function not a boy led patrol function to do that so that that was a big concern okay so uh, priority of that one to two what one one okay one yeah. okay. Uh, follow through with that and in reading through there it also looked like there was maybe a lack of adult leadership other resources for the scout master to follow through is there an assistant Scout master to lead the other patrol or to be part of the leadership of the of a second patrol versus just having one without that one on one mentorship that should be there. Okay. And at least you have anything to add to that? No, you no. Know, it's just, it's, we collaborate, we get together, we get with anything we can collaborate with. I'm not trying to limit that to anything. Then, uh, so, so what's our plan on execution on this plan? We've come up with, there's, there's one more section that we didn't have enough people to put into, but with volunteer leadership, you would go through the same process, come up with some things. In this particular thing, we picked two problems that we're going to work on. That's not a hard, fast rule or anything. You can decide whatever you need to work on. And 
can I give a little input? I, I, I was looking, reading over this volunteer leadership part. I think number one, they don't have enough leaders. So they need to really work on recruiting more because if they start out with 10 boys, that's at least 20 parents, but they've only got five adults. So only getting a quarter of the adults, and that's assuming they all have a youth in the program. Some of them might not, but, and then the other thing is there seems to be a lack of training. Mm-hmm. And so if, if they can set up a culture or an expectation of trained leaders, trained leaders, it's proven are more effective and they feel more confident and do a better job because they know what they're supposed to be doing and they know what's expected of them. And so if they will get more people and expect them to be trained, the troop's just going to function better. Just going to do better. So we came up with these two, four, six, seven items. What uh, next thing is decide who's responsible for it in our execution you know, decide, make an assignment, you know, and set up some kind of a monitoring or record keeping system that you can track that and say, okay, Jeff, you were going to do this. Uh, my wife has a list and it's monitored. I'll guarantee it. And she follows up with me and says, did you get this done? And I keep telling her, I'll do it. You don't have to ask me every six months to get it done. I'll get it done. <laughs> Okay. Uh, documentation, there it was, was the next one. I want to make sure we have that documentation to get that in. Remember that we as commissioners are a link. We're a facilitator between between the, all the, oper- you know, the district operation, the unit, the council. We can do things that can really facilitate what's necessary in that unit. So we have these things that we've come up with. We've got units. It may be in a challenging unit that you're going to be the only one that's going to really follow up and kind of push that forward. It's going to take on maybe a new level of meaning for service, service, you know, that you're going to have to be required to do to get that unit going. There's district people that can help you. There's other commissioners. There's other units. There's the council. There's a lot of resources that we can do to do that. We're not going to do the other breakout session, but as a commissioner, you look at the actions that we do and determine a resource. You might look at some of the things that we came up with back there on budget. Okay, like we talked about budget, coming into budget, you got to have a budget for that plan. You might look at a resource and say, wow, I got a so-and-so on the council that's really good at this. I'm going to sign them. They've raised all this money, da 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 There's things that we're linking all together there. We haven't talked about the fact that it's time-based. You need to have a, a timeline. We focus more on the resources. But there, there needs to be this maybe ought to be it's recommended that we have a unit service plan updated every six months. You know, so we're kind of staying on top of that um, and decide how to check in and everything like that. OK, resources are provided, evaluate the effectiveness of resources, ensure the unit is taking advantage. Coach and mentor, evaluate when adjustments are needed. That's just all common sense stuff. As far as I'm concerned, and looking at the time, we got about five minutes. So, in summary, Jeff, how about you summarize a little what you think for us a little bit? As far as more questions, let's say summary or questions. What do you have on setting up a unit service plan? What what's cl- still not clear? What is clear and you really like? Whatever. Let's just go down the group and see. One thought that's come to my mind today and as we've heard about the unit service plan at various times, uh, putting myself in the position of the committee chairman or the scoutmaster is what kind of notes are they taking about my operation? What do I need to be worried about that's going to the council, to the scout executive and whatnot? So, Oh, good idea. Anybody else ever thought of that? (laughs) <laughs> they just keeping track of the bad things I do or the good I do. So what would you how, okay, there's an action item. What would you do to fix that? <laughs> I go guess, talk to them, explain them what we're trying to do. Since I don't know the answer to it. If I, you are service oriented and you have that relationship, I don't think that's going to be a problem, personally. You know, if they know that I'm there to help, to con- care, concern, they have that with me and I'm working with the boys. Here's where we need some help. You know, here's where you need, here's where you need, what what was the term I used? Loving criticism, loving critics. That's what it was. You know, they know you're a loving critic. Perfect. I don't think that'll be less of a problem, maybe. Just by. Do it for me. 
Uh, it wouldn't do it for me. I would still be want to know what's going, what's happening with this information that's being put in as, some data. As a loving somewhere. critic, I could probably take you and bring you over to my house, sit down, and just show you. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying said, that might be that might other be. other than the um, collaborative assessment and unit service plan process. All the other things that you're doing as a unit commissioner that are going into commissioner tools should be done after you get home or when you're sitting on your in your car on your phone. You can do it there, too, because the app works yeah. really well. But you should never do any. I wouldn't even take notes when you're at a con at a, at a unit meeting and having a contact. If it's not this collaborative assessment where they know you're, that's why you're there, and that's what you're doing during that time. And they can have a copy. Don't of that take class. notes, because then they do. They feel they feel like they're being checked up on. Yep. They feel like you're you're uh, you're you're there trying to like you know report up the chain, and, so, and they get intimidated. But again, yeah, like, you said, check like you said, have <laughs> right. Don't have a checklist. <laughs> don't have a clipboard. <laughs> but make sure they know you're there because you love them and you care. And you'll do what, whatever they need help with, but you're not there to. Very good. You're not. You're not there to, like, spy on them, right? Emily, I was thinking you could make a someone who's higher above you or on the same level or whatever um, say one specific thing of positive feedback to, like, I could say that to them. My unit is doing this really well. Next time you see them, could you please compliment them on that or say that you heard that? So then they're getting the feedback. They're, they're knowing that that positive feedback is being spread. I mean, questions this morning. One of the 20 questions, have you ever sent a thank you card recently? I've done that for years. There is no more powerful thing as to send a handwritten thank you card to somebody. I worked 30 years ago, 20 years ago from my father-in-law in Idaho. Had a gal come in years, years after I'd left. I want to talk to this guy. Well, who was it? Well, he's, I don't know. I don't know his name. Some little guy. But he sent me a thank you card. Oh, that was Kevin. Okay, so it, powerful, powerful. Matter of fact, I'm going to share a quick story. Then I'll get to Annalise. In my business, you know, you usually get, you have the company up here, the supplier that sells me equipment. And then they, in the Christmas time, they always give me something because I buy all this equipment from them. So what I did one year is I took Christmas presents, wrapped them up in Christmas paper, had it all gathered, and I went the other direction. I went up to the company. I went and sent one to the computer guy. I sent one to each of the office gals that answered the phone. I sent one to the service desk and all this. You know, I sent a whole bunch of Christmas presents in July, <laughs> wrapped up as Christmas presents, Next time I called on the phone, oh, Connecticut, this is Pat. Pat, this is Kevin. Hey, guys, Kevin's on the phone. Thank I hear all this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, powerful stuff creates a lot of things. Okay, Annalise. Well, along the same line, I was going to say, we're like when I'm at a committee meeting or something, a lot of time my units will go, oh, and our unit commissioner is here. Do you have anything to say? You know, they think I'm there for an announcement or some something. And so I like to take the opportunity to praise the unit for something they do well in front of the parents, in front of the scouts, you know, to let them know, no, I don't have any announcements. I just want to let you know, I really appreciate the way you guys and then, you know, do whatever. The big wig said this was the way it is. Thank you. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Back there, Rick. Rick. Well, I'm I'm one for training. I would just make sure that those leaders are saying, that the commissioner, oh, yeah. That's the most important information. Mike, you've been a long time. Ditto, 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 and ditto. Okay. Well, Summary, thank you. I appreciate you being here. This is, I think you need to go and set up that unit service plan. Um, thanks for coming and participating. Next time we'll take my hollow head and fill it a little bit more. So I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, thanks, Kevin.